On these earliest exit lines, if you find that you pinch in the exit, get off the track, this next session and your front tire's got less chicken strip than the back, not good. That means you need to open it up on the exit, relax, look down the track a little bit, let your body position and help you with the bike. Good enough? The earliest exit point. Where do I want to be on the exit of the turn so that the bike, I can stand it up and get on the gas and start heading toward my, my entrance point for the next turn? The beauty part of that is that you watch your professionals do it at that level. If you got freeze frame on your DVR and whatnot, man, you get right in the middle of the turn, freeze it, take a look at their body position, what they're doing. They're not just kissing the mirror. They drop their head down. There's another 30, 40 pounds. Boom, right in the middle of the turn, right at the apex. You might see some weird body positions, but right at the apex, they go bang and rail it out. They put the bike, and the bike will be real stable and comfortable, so their earliest exit line's good, and their body position changes around as they do that work. Even though, and we try to do the same thing as instructors, and you will naturally too. It'll come to you that you're moving the bike around, and you're doing work, and you're over here with your body, with the bikes carrying the line. So that's real, real important. We have to go slow in a slow turn, don't we? Sounds kind of simple, but it does. Don't try to beat up a half a second or a second a lap in seven. It ain't there. There's quarter and tenths and hundreds of a second in seven. It's a slow turn. Go slow to it. Go slow through it. Because if I don't get my earliest exit line and I go too wide in seven, where am I at an eight? I'm done. Okay, I gotta shut it off, roll up, put my hand up. Now I might have to look around and see if somebody else is coming by so I don't drop in front of them. So when you get into seven, you need to go up into seven, stay to the right, about eight feet off to the right side. You don't get to be at the edge. Go into that apex and stay up in there until you're up on the top of that hill. And I'm looking at eights like where he's at eight. I'm up in seven and then I see eight and I'm rolling into eight. If I go in too early, let's, let's talk about the earliest exit line. So if I'm like, you know, we use one as an example. I'm coming down a straight for one, on the brakes, get my downshift done. Come out here and look, and if you do nothing more than you give me about a foot of head shift to the right and a right elbow bend, I don't care about your butt or your knee, if you'll do that, how am I going to turn any other way except right? I get that. As soon as I'm in my apex, my early sex of finding one, I'm looking to two, look at and I'm head. up the head. I'm up the hill to three, okay? So if you do nothing else with us today and learn, it's putting that weight on the body, bending the elbow, putting the head out there. How much weight is this? 100 pounds, right? From almost two, so I'm gonna need a lot to drink good beer. So out here, put that 100 pounds, the bike's gonna turn naturally. Now, we do counter steer, right? We push on the inside bar to get the bike to turn right to gyroscopic progression. Remember geometry class, right? <laughs> push on it to go right, and you sit out there and do that. So on this next session, let's, let's try to work on our earliest exit line. I want that outside of that turn, I want that inside of that turn. So one's a good place to practice, because if you do make a mistake with it, it gives you plenty of room. So if you're on the bike and you're, you're doing that and you're over here, this knee's on the tank. That's why I got the cutouts in the tank for our knees. So that's there. The foot itself has no weight on it, right? Very little, because if you're doing it correctly and your butt is not planted and you're in the seat, you're actually active on the bike, I mean, up and active, then yeah, most of all your weight's out on the right foot. Now if you can't do this, I'm going to gym. Yeah, I'm telling you, the first, especially you guys the first time, you're going to be like, oh, he's not kidding. It's a lot of work to go fast. It makes, we look, you know, the pros and, and those that have been riding for a while make it look easy. It's a lot of work. The faster you go, the more work it is. I mean, it's a lot, a lot of work. That's why you see all the pros. They're all buff. They ride bicycles, weight lift, train. Much yeah. like, you know, it's even when he's demonstrating it, and he's hanging off the bike, his head goes naturally like that. He just does it naturally. I've been watching it. Every time he says, get off the bike, he says like that. What's he looking for? The exit. He's looking for where the corner's going. Whereas a lot of you guys are just are looking where you're going, like this. Whereas uh, he does it dead naturally, like that and like that, because that's where the track goes. So try and, try and look beyond where you are. Loop through the corner. A classic example is turn one. You get that one. You get that one. Turn one is determined by turn two. So, where are we? The entrance to this corner, and therefore the approach, and the braking, and the turning, determines where you are on two. So what are you thinking about? You're not thinking about turn one. You've got to think about turn two. 
So look through it. So as you're coming down, establish where the cone is, wherever it is, I've lost it, break marker, is, yeah. the brake marker, come in there, and then be looking, you see your, your cone for the cut point on one, but you're looking actually towards turn two. If you don't do that, you will treat this corner as just a, a separate corner, and you will exit, you'll try and go in too hard. What was it?